Hi, my name is Angelina and I'm a street style photographer based in Helsinki and today I'm going to show you my retouching routine using the Loop Deck Plus for Photoshop. Today I'm going to edit my portrait which was taken during the Paris Fashion Week this fall. It was the last day of the Fashion Week and I saw this amazing girl like incredibly beautiful with very intense eyesight. As you can see, I already made the color correction in Lightroom using Lubdeck as well. And in Photoshop, I'm going to do only the small retouching of the tiny imperfections that you can see on her skin. I really like Lubdeck because it's flexible and makes my workflow faster. And as well, you basically can customize it whatever you want. I'm opening the setup or a loop deck software. And I'm going to assign some actions that I already made beforehand in Photoshop for this last three P buttons. For P6, I'm going to assign frequency separation from the action table here. For P7, I'm going to assign shadows. And for P8, the highlights, which I'm going to use um, with smoothing her skin tone and retouching the picture. Looptic has a very interesting function called mouse control tool and I will show you how to use it, for example, with curves. I'm going to create the curve adjustment layer by pressing the highlight button over here. And now you can see how to use the mouse tool, uh, which gives me more freedom in terms of like making this picture more contrasty. So I'm putting my mouse tool here when I want to create more shadows and I can use the clarity and shadows button to move it vertically and horizontally. Just a bit down here and we can move our mouse tool just a bit up to increase the highlights here. I prefer to use mouse control tool rather than just a mouse because it makes my actions more accurate, especially in the cases when you want to add just a bit of contrast. Because for example, with a mouse, you can scroll a bit too much and the pictures go crazy. Okay, now I'm satisfied with the coloring and I want to merge the layers into the new one by pressing the green button. While editing, is, it is super convenient to use D1, which allows you to zoom in or zoom out to the picture. And now I'm going to remove this tiny, tiny imperfections here, here from the forehead. Honestly, I don't like the polished skin, so I'm just taking the tiny imperfections out. And now I'm heading towards my favorite part. As you remember, I assigned the frequency separation action on P6 button. It creates two more layers, one texture layer and the other one, which consists color. We can toggle between them by using up and down arrows. And now I need to turn off the texture layer by pressing the left arrow. To use the healing brush, I need to use the Alt key here and to activate it, I need to press the switcher button on to turn on the keyboard. And now you can see the notification that the keyboard is turned on. To change the size of the healing brush, you can turn the control dial to make it smaller or bigger if you want. I will make it a bit smaller and then you press the Alt key to copy the part that you want to insert. Now I'm going to use the brush tool to continue working with the color layer and you can find the brush tool on L1 button and it is assigned by default. To modify brush mode, you can press the luminance button the size, mode and opacity are assigned to the first three color wheels in the same order as you can find them from the bar menu. Okay, I need to make my brush a bit bigger by using the red wheel, maybe somewhere around here. And 
turn down the opacity maybe towards 17% is good. And the mode is dissolved now and I need to get back to normal. So I'm just pressing the orange wheel and now it's normal. You can toggle between two last use tools by pressing C2 and now we're heading towards the healing brush. And now I'm going to show you some techniques which make your picture pop up. I have created two actions and assigned them to P7 and P8 and I will start with shadows under P7. For this action I will use the brush as well. Let's put the luminance on and make it bigger. And also I want to higher the opacity to maybe 65%. And I want to pop up her cheekbones and some shadows that are already here to make them look cooler. Some face contouring. A bit of eyebrows. To compare before and after, we can hide and turn on the layer by pressing the left arrow. Now you can see the result. And if we think that this is too much, we can reduce the opacity of the layer by scrolling down the D2. And I think for us, something around 60% is enough. Yeah, something like that. Now, basically, we repeat the same actions, but with the highlights, which are under P8. As well, we are using brush with an opacity of 65%. And we are going to make her hair looks brighter. I want to re reduce the size of the brush. And we're just popping the highlights up. Also, we can reduce the opacity of the layer if it's too much. Now, to see the results, we can group the layers of the shadows and highlights. To do that, press the keyboard on, press Shift, choose both layers, turn the keyboard off, and press the red key again. Now it's grouped. Now I want to make her eyes look even more blue than they are right now. And for that, again, I'm using the brush and I'm making the brush the same size as the eyelid. Firstly, I need to merge all the layers again into one by using the green key. Now I want to reduce the opacity of my brush and scrolling down towards, let's say, 30%. Then I'm pressing the brush only on the eyelids of the model. To clean up a bit, I can create the layer mask by pressing C6 and zoom in with a D1. Now I need to change the blending mode of the layer and for that, I assigned Fn and D2. And let's change it to luminosity. Then we can zoom out by just pressing the D1. And now it's time to see the final results. For that, let's press before and after. Okay, I'm happy with the results and right now I'm going to export my picture by pressing the export button where you can fill in all your settings and save your photo. I hope you enjoyed the video and I gave you enough tips for using the Lubtic Plus for Photoshop.